All right, so this is going to be a pod review for the Dulce Number no. Two, and as you can see in the back over there, that is my Dulce Number no. Two plant. Now I have another plant growing in the other other greenhouse. It's much smaller. I'll probably bring that one in. I'm probably going to let this one go. For the year because it's just in the big pot and I really don't have room indoors to bring all these pepper plants in but I can all the stuff in the small pots I'll bring those in I think I'm gonna leave everything in the big pots in the greenhouse so and I'm just not gonna winter them over I might try to squeeze them in my garage and see if they live part of the way through the winter and then I could try to figure out a way to get lighting to it I don't know I don't know if it's worth it uh, for me this year and next year because I'm growing more seeds and I'm going to be growing them through the winter. So I don't know if it's going to be worth all this extra work to bring them in. It's just simply too much work for me at this point right now. But in the back over here is the Dulce number two. And the plant did get pretty big. It's, it's basically all the way to the top of the greenhouse. I'd probably say that's close to four and a half feet, somewhere in that range. So it did get pretty big. This is a two-year plant. Grew it all last year. It didn't produce any peppers, and this year it just put out some peppers. This year, had I put it out in le you know less crowded environment, it probably would have produced quite a bit more in peppers. So, but nevertheless, I got enough peppers off of here to be able to do a review on it. So, first of all, it's a regular stem plant. It's waxy smooth. Uh, it does have a little bit of purpling at the nodes over there, as you can see. It's it's generally a narrow leaf now i when the plant first grew it did have some broad leaves on it but pretty much from what i can see it's a narrow leaf plant after it's matured anyway and that's really about it i don't have any flowers at least not that i could actually get to anyway let me see if there's anything over here up top no those are these are all seven pot bow gums no, unfortunately, if there is flowers, I, I'm not going to be able to get all the way up there to see them. But nevertheless, there it is all the way in the back. So let's pick one of these. And as you can see, that's what the uh, calyx looks like on it. It's a very interesting calyx. It's almost like an enanalum uh, variety. Well, let me get down off this ladder so I can give you a better look at the pepper. Now I can't imagine this not being hot because it pretty much looks like a habanero of some sort. So it is more than likely really hot. But that that calyx right there, that's really interesting. That's a very interesting type of uh, cap on there. Very interesting. Very narrow, very square and, and defined. I like that. It's very different, it's very identifiable. Now I have grown the Dulce uh, variety. I don't remember what the Dulce original variety is. This is the Dulce number two, so I don't remember what the Dulce looked like. I can't remember, but I, I either have seeds for it or, and have grown it in the past, or um, I, I still have the seeds somewhere, or I did a video on it possibly. I, I really don't even remember at this point. But here's the number two, Dulce number two, and we will do a taste test on it. All right, so let's turn you around. All right, guys, here we go. This is the Dulce number two. And this is probably going to be a very hot one. Though, I, my the way it's been going this year, what I think has been supposed to be really hot has been not bad at all. And what has not really supposed to be as hot was hot. So it's really a flip-flop year for me this year. It's just crazy with the heat, which ones are going to be hot, which ones are not. I just... Some are tangy, some are sweet. It was just a crazy pepper year for me. Uh, the plants did good, as you can see. I mean, I did really, really good with plant growth. And production was okay. I, nothing for me to really, you know, get crazy about in production. But it was all right. I, I mean, I did okay. I mean, pretty much everything fruited. There's maybe a half dozen of my plants that didn't fruit this year. But I'll bring them in for the winter. They'll definitely fruit next year. But unfortunately... It's the end of the year, and whatever is going to be, you know, whatever is not going to be fruiting by pretty much mid-October is pretty much game over. It's, you know, if you didn't do it by then, I have to either bring you in and win you over, 
to get peppers or I'm just going to leave you out here and just start new seeds next year. And I really don't want to do that. I like bringing a lot of my peppers in because I get such an early start in the season, especially to some of the super hots. Like this one didn't fruit at all last year, so I brought it in and this year it did fruit. It's just the way it is sometimes. So bringing them in is definitely an advantage. It's just I don't have the room and I'm not going to do what I did last year. And I filled up my whole dining room because it's got a south facing sunlight. And I filled up the whole dining room and I was watering it. The water was coming out of the dishes, going on my hardwood floors. It stained some of it. It did a little damage to the floor. I'm just, I'm not doing that anymore. I can't do that. So I can't keep sustaining damage to my, my house. Uh, trying to bring these peppers in. I eventually going to have to build a heated greenhouse somewhere once the house sells. So anyway, this is, I, I'm sorry to digress. I just, so here it is. Let's get into it going in. Well, really low on heat. There is a little tiny bit of heat on there, but I don't know. This is really strange. I, I think this is supposed to be somewhat of a hot pepper. It's got a spicy taste to it, meaning I can taste that fatali taste, back to aftertaste of fatali. I call that the fatali effect. If you don't know what that is, watch a lot of my past pod reviews. I talk a lot about the fatali effect and... I talk about what spiciness is. It has a slight spicy taste to it. The heat-wise, God, I wouldn't even say it's 10. It's like ridiculously low. Now, I'll go up the pepper. I'll take another bite off the top here. But so far, the heat is like virtually nothing. And as far as the taste goes, it was like eating a habanero a little bit. But the, the taste of the habanero quickly dissipated, and then there was that aftertaste of that fatali type of flavor a little bit hanging around. So it had a fruitiness of a habanero, slight aftertaste of a fatali, if I should say that. And uh, I could still kind of feel it, it and sense it in my sinuses, you know, by, you know, where you taste and scent in the back of your throat and everything. And in your sinuses, you can, that flavor just kind of hangs around. Slightly feel it all going on there. Other than that, it's basically a very smooth Thai pepper. I, I can't even really describe any kind of heat. I'll finish this one off. Well, there's not really any sweetness in it. Had that slight little bit of fruity flavor. Little bit of a, a habanero aftertaste. And... Such a tiny, tiny amount of heat. It's so small, it's ridiculous. I would say pepperoncinis are hotter than this thing. It's ridiculously low. I mean, we're talking 10, maybe below 10. But I can still sense it a little bit. I feel a little tiny bit on the very tip of my tongue, maybe underneath the tongue a little. That's basically it. Skins were a little bit, uh, not tough, but the flesh on the inside was soft. And so as soon as you chew it up, the flesh would separate from the skin, and then the skin gets stuck to the roof of your mouth. Kind of did that a little bit. So I got to spit, like, part those little pieces of skin out so I'm not spitting on camera. But that's really it. I mean, I don't know what else to say other than that little bit of a spicy flavor afterwards. Um, not much else to say about it. it was it's very nice pepper, I'll be honest with you. And don't get me wrong, I like hot peppers. It's just I can't eat hot peppers continuously. There is a side effect from doing that that I really don't appreciate. So I do enjoy eating peppers that are slightly spicy and have a nice different kind of flavor than, you know, a sweet pepper. I kind of look for that, you know, and it's they're, they're much easier to eat on a regular daily basis than eating super hot peppers all the time now don't get me wrong eating habaneros or jalapenos is you know a daily food for me easily you know that that type of heat range i mean i eat a lot of these peppers but once you start getting above that and getting into the really hot ones i can only eat so many of those things before it starts to take a toll on me and a lot of ways i'm not willing to describe on camera now that that heat range may vary from pepper to pepper so i couldn't imagine it going to like you know, 100,000 Scoville units. I, I can't imagine it going that high. But I, I could say that there may be a potential for this pepper to possibly become warm 
and you may get peppers that might be 500 Scoville units, maybe a thousand. I haven't so far experienced it. It really depends on the pepper, where it's growing, how much sunlight it gets, how much water it gets, the humidity in the air, the temperature swings up and down. But believe it or not, that all affects the way your peppers are going to come out and taste in the end. Tomatoes are the same way. So it has a big effect on it. So you may end up with a little more heat depending on how you grow it. But as of right now for this review, it's basically a sweet pepper if you want to even say it has any heat at all. It does have, like I say, a minute amount that I was barely able to detect. It's just I do so many different types of peppers and, and stuff like that. I really look for that the slightest bit of flavor of capsaicin, the tiniest bit of heat. I look for it. If I wasn't looking for it, I wouldn't even notice it. If you put it in cooking, you wouldn't even notice it. You would never know. You'd say it was a sweet pepper. Again, there was a little bit of like a spicy flavor, which was not bad. When I say spicy, I'm referring to that taste that hangs around in the back of your mouth. It kind of tastes like a fatale a little bit. That flavor just kind of was there a little, and it's hanging around, which was okay. It's not, it's not enough to upset me. And believe me when I tell you, when I say I get upset from... Fatalis, believe me, that's, it's, I'm probably not the only one. There's something in that pe pepper that causes that. But this pepper didn't really have that. It did have a slightly nice fruity flavor. Outside of that, I don't know what else to say. It's a great pepper. I definitely give it a grow. I don't know if I can actually offer seeds for it this year. I'd have to grow this for a couple of years and build up a seed bank and, you know, grow several plants and get a, you know, decent harvest and then I can or for seeds, but there's really not enough for me to do that. I, I would only be able to offer one, two orders. It's just not enough peppers on there. And I'm not going to build a web page just for that one thing. So we'll have to see. In coming years, I may offer this in the future. But there are other websites that do offer the seed. You can check them out. But that's it. That was your pepper review for the Dulce number 2. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And I will see you on the next one. Take care.